What's going on guys? It is your boy Seth. There's a video here today. There's a brand new video, brand new series as well of this really fun thing I wanted to give a shot. I was like, I want a way to lay out some really fun, just cool, random, trendy effects in Photoshop that you guys think should, all of you guys should be aware of and learn and just have some inspiration to. That's what's going on here. That's literally the point. And hopefully you guys do enjoy it. I mean, there's nothing else for me to really say, but if you guys do like the episode, please really like, like on it so that way I know all that good stuff. And if you guys are new to the videos, if you guys like the video by the end of the video, please be sure to subscribe because there'll be more really cool stuff. That's all I got. So uh, yeah, love you guys and see you in a second. All right, guys. So for the first effect, it's actually pretty popular right now. It's actually known as glass morphism. It's a really fun effect to use when you want to add some text or just a fun little detailed element. And it's honestly really, really easy to do. Simply head over to the rounded rectangle tool, or whatever shape you'd like to use, then click and drag and make the shape whatever length you'd like. Then up top where the settings are, make sure your stroke is off, which is the red slash box if you guys were not aware. Then head to fill toward the left of that and make sure that's on the gradient setting, which is the third box option. Here you want to have your gradient box be black and white to start. However, on the far right top anchor of the gradient, you want to select that and change the opacity to 15%. And just from that, you kind of should already see your box be kind of clear going from white to black, nice little fade in, and also kind of see the effect come into play a little bit. After all that, you want to make sure you select the bottom far left box and change that color to whatever you would like. So for me, I'm going to change it to a nice dark red. However, once you guys are done with that, you want to hide your new gradient layer that you just created, then flatten your image with the shortcut Control, Shift, Alt, and E. That will make a new layer with everything on your canvas in one single image, minus the fact that we hid the gradient layer so that it's not being shown. But now you want to go ahead and select the thumbnail layer of the gradient layer while holding control on your keyboard to acquire the marquee selection. Then with the selection tool, which is M on your keyboard for the shortcut, simply select back on your collapsed image and choose layer via copy. Now, all you guys have to do with that selected layer is you want to apply a gradient blur or go under blur gallery and use an iris blur, which happens to be my favorite. And obviously you can delete your flying image as well. But now with that, all the information or any information you guys put in this box will kind of just stand out and you're pretty much done. Also, do not be afraid to move the actual blurred layer and gradient around the canvas to make a really cool little effect. Almost like if you wanted to highlight certain things while also kind of like describing what it is that they're highlighting. Really fun effect, super simple, and it's super easy to do. All right, homie, so for the next effect, it's known as pixel stretch. It's super simple to do, but I think it's just a really awesome effect just to know that it's available. So what you guys want to do like we did last time is start again by collapsing or flattening your image with Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Then you guys want to use the rectangle marquee tool and select a part that you would like to stretch. So you can either do a nice small strip like this or go ahead and select the entire side if that's what you desire as well. But once you guys get your selection, you guys want to right click and layer via copy. Now with that copy layer, you want to press Control T for free transform, zoom out really, really far and select whatever side you would like to stretch on. Be sure to hold shift, click, and drag as far as you guys can. And if you guys need to zoom out more, I would highly recommend it to keep stretching. When you guys zoom out just enough and go back to zoom back in, you'll see the nice little stretch is pretty much good. However, your document size is going to be stupidly, stupidly large. So you guys want to make sure you, of course, select the actual half of your stretch. And of course, layer via cut it out. That way you can delete the excess that's off the canvas. That way when you guys save, your document size won't be super large and you'll be good to go. Alright guys, so the next effect is actually one of my personal favorites and it's known as Gradient Mesh. It's super fun and super effective if you want to spice up a black and white effect, maybe on a player or a person or an object, or even if it had low quality, just makes it look way more dynamic. And to do it, it's honestly super, super easy. Start off with a cutout of a person or an object and apply a bit of texture under the basics with the camera raw filter, just so that it kind of makes it feel a little bit more intense and add a little bit of color correction as well if you guys want to. Next, under your adjustments, you guys want to choose Gradient Map. Then of course you guys want to right click and clip mask the gradient mask to the actual object or the player right below it. However, let's also make sure that the gradient is also black and white. Next is the fun part though. Go to your adjustments and choose gradient map once again. However, this time you can have it be any color gradient that you would like and of course clip mask that as well to the object or the person. And really quickly, a little self plug, if you guys don't have any gradients like I have at all, if you guys want to have some really cool ones, I have a full pack that updates really regularly with $4 and you can, it's be, it'd be yours, just saying, selfie.com, so that's SOHQ. Anyway, once you guys do have your color gradient, you want to exit out of the gradient editor, then make sure you are selected on the layer mask of the gradient layer and not selected on the gradient icon to the left of it. Here is when you then want to go to select and choose color range. And this is the final table where the actual effect is finalized with a fuzziness setting of anywhere between 40 and 150, depending on how much of the effect you want to actually showcase, select the object or the person so you find a look that you really like. Basically, what you guys are selecting are the white and black values of the actual object or the person. So depending on where you actually click, it can give you a different effect. But once you guys find that perfect color selection, press OK and you're good to go. Just like that, you kind of elevated the idea of just using a black and white photo. 
Okay, so for this next one, it's known as a diffuse pattern. It's a really awesome combination of effects that you guys can use to make some awesome patterns, backgrounds, or even vectorize them, make some really cool things for projects. And it's pretty easy to set up. So let's just start off with you guys actually having your colors be black and white. You can honestly just select this little icon right here to make it easy for yourself. On a new layer, you want to make this new layer a smart object. That way, all the effects that you guys end up creating and putting on this, you'll be able to see it. Under filter, go to render and then select clouds. Then under filter again, choose noise and add noise. And you want to make sure you have your noise at 25% and press OK. Now go to windows and open up your actions tab. Here is where you can actually record a sequence of effects and steps to repeat really easily with one button. So be sure to choose a new group and name it like pattern or something like that. Then once you guys are done, press the plus button to start recording your new action. And be sure when the option pops up to make your function key F2 to replay the action. Then select record. So for your first step under recording, you want to go to filter, then go to other, and then choose high pass and set this to six pixels. Then go to image adjustments and select threshold and set this to 127. Now you guys want to go to filter once again and choose blur and then choose Gaussian blur and set this Gaussian blur to three pixels. Now you guys want to go back to your action tab and press stop recording. Now all you guys have to do is press F2 to reapply that same exact action, but you guys want to basically spam it so that way you guys can see the actual pattern start forming. I would say anywhere from four to five, six different times, you'll actually start seeing the pattern really, really clearly. However, you won't be able to get it to be really, really clear unless you guys go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and use 200, 200% 200 pixels, and then zero threshold. And just like that, you guys have a really dope pattern that you can also re-roll if you guys were to select and unselect the cloud filter from the start. And even if you guys want to even further explore it, back in the second step after you made your black and white cloud and then you guys added noise, you can then add some different kind of distortion features and then rerun the same action once again. And then just like that, you get some really cool different things again. You can then toss that into Illustrator for a vector or run this pattern with a really awesome gradient and just get kind of creative. All right, guys. So for the last effect for this episode, it's known as gradient rings. It's a super fun exploration to like texturize or even modernize a canvas with a really cool color scheme that you can think of. It's super beautiful and it's honestly really, really easy to do. You want to start off with your gradient tool, which is G on your keyboard and make sure the gradient settings up top. You guys have the second option, which is the circle chosen. Then inside your gradient editor, it just looks something like this. Select the far left and the far right anchors and make sure these are both set to 0% opacity. Then once you guys have that set, you want to make a middle anchor right on the top as well. However, this should be set to 100%. And to make a new anchor, all you guys have to do is just simply click. Now you guys can actually create any color scheme by adding two different anchors on each side on the bottom to create your ring. Once you guys have done that, you can press OK. Then with a new layer, you can use your circle gradient tool, click, hold shift, and make your shape. Now with your shape, use the circle rectangle marquee tool and to create a really perfect circle, click near the middle of the ring, hold alt and shift, and delete when you find a size that you want to delete at. Then you're pretty much done. You can even take it a step further and press Ctrl T to free transform. But then of course, right click and choose wrap. Here you can basically just hold Alt on your keyboard and just click somewhere around the circle to add grids. Then you guys can navigate each anchor point on its own and make the shape even more organic. It's honestly super dope. And if you're into gradients, it's just like this really cool thing to kind of know how to do. All right, guys, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You had a little bit of fun. And of course, if you like the video, please leave a like on the video if you guys like the series or maybe the start of a new series. But also, if you guys have any cool effects or whatever you want to see me kind of like show you guys or be like, you don't even know how to start that, that, that thing, let me try it. You guys send it to me and I'll try to put it in the next episode or something like that. So with that being said, I love you guys so very much. Sesso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking a guys. Love you so very much and uh, enjoy your weekend. Peace.